Alright, I'm trying to do another video where you can see the radish pattern here. Um, you can see the faint white lines. Um, here on the side, hopefully you can see the the um, the faint white lines that go diagonally. There are two sets of them on the side here. On the back, um, I'll cut my finger again, carving. Um, are more, you can see in the white area, just under the uh, beast, um, the lines. And um, here in the yellow area, you can see the white lines are very apparent. Um, this particular stone has uh, the two uh, best type. The bottom ones, you see they're uh, round, they're called rib. Um, radish lines and then the front and the sides have what they call Y shape they look like little they they branch out in little Y's and you see this other um, you can see um, on the side here the the faint um, I see the, the faint white line that runs here and then they're more apparent here um, and then one of the cool things that occasionally in Tin Hong you find is this, this yellowish area that runs across the stone. That is actually a series of cracks and um, they're filled with um, uh, iron oxide. And in the sunlight, they, it kind of glows yellow. It's a really, really beautiful effect. Um, you can see the faint, um, the faint cracks. You notice that they're actually, uh, um, you know, at uh, right angles almost, um, grid cracking, yeah, and very specific to Tien Hong. Um, and then here you can see the color. Um, uh, even the white field stone, um, the color always has this yellow tinge to it. Um, it's really, really beautiful. Um, you can also see on the, the back end of the, the beast here how um, the um, stone has like a gloss look that's the condensate look and those scratch lines I was talking about in my other video they're almost not there and these are remarkable carving um, um, you can also see how the color it looks like the back end of the dog of the animal um, looks uh, a bit greasy. Um, it's one of the features of Tin Hong because Tin Hong is actually um, uh, dictite and kaolinite, um, whereas Shoshan stones are types of amalgamite like uh, pyrophyllite. You know, uh, you can see here it's under the rider, um, one of those rib-shaped um, um, uh, radish lines. And those are actually um, uh, cracks, micro-cracking that occurred, and then they filled in with uh, various chemicals. Um, I, sodium, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see the, the, the red, the yellow, reddish color coming through as I move the stone in the light. And then also, um, the animal's um, hair, how it's been carved. I mean, let me see if I can find something that has a pen. It's, bear with me. So you can see the how, how the thickness of these and how perfect the carving is. Um, so here's a pen tip as a comparison, right up against the stone. So you can see how finely carved these are, and the width between the lines is perfect. And the line width itself, the engraved line itself is also perfect. There's no ripping or anything that you can commonly see in the stones. Um, um, one of the things about Tin Hung is um, um, it's one of the best stones for carving. It's it's like carving greasy, waxy air. It's just the delight to carve. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it's an amazing they're amazing, amazing, amazing stones. Um, let's see. Um, 
and you can see there again that that wet look the bottom part is you know kind of scratched and that's why it doesn't have that the sheen and shine of the of the beast um once again let me see if i can zoom in on the the hair the workmanship on this animal the face and the, and the rider is He's got curly cues, you know, um, and the tail. Really, 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 really wonderful work. Um, and then inside the the animal's head are these black sphericals of of, of pure iron, you know. And that's because the stone, I believe, is electrical in nature. That's the white radish on the front here, right in here. That's like an electric field, you know, roiling electric field, and the the stone is separating. The electric current is causing the, the iron to condense, you know, um, and form these. And you, you can see sometimes like stones will be like clear on one side and have all the iron compounds on the other side, and you'll have like a central line that traverses it. And you can see like little arcs and curves. Um, with like pathways filled with just little iron uh, and hematite globules, you know. Um, and the stone also has like um, Ed John has like a, a very beautiful, um, like um, you know, like Kuten jade quality to it, like the whitish area. Um, what they call it, milk edge white, kind of hard to see. In my other video, you can see it right there on the edge of the of, of the stone. Um, you can see um, just like um, when you have milk in a glass, along the the edge of the milk where it meets the glass, it's the it's the milk's kind of see through a little, and that's what I mean by milk edge white. And fine jade has that quality throughout the entire stone, and. Um, that's the thing about these um, Bikian stones, um, uh, as fine as the finest jade, and uh, that's why they're valuable. You can see here the ear has that, that milk edge white color and the, the knee of the beast. This is just a wonderful, wonderful stone. Let me see the bottom there so you can see up um, uh, the, the central crack. Um, the thing about cracks, um, generally, um, the deeper you go into stone, the darker and more brown the cracks will be, whereas the cracks that usually occur on the outside of the, of the stone when it's found are generally blood red or purplish red and very, very fine. Um, and then also, uh, the stones will always get lighter towards the center, you know, and, uh, so you can also tell its placement within the parent body and then uh, along the creek where these are found you can um, uh, by the different features you can tell where the stone was found along the um, two kilometer long pathway um, okay I will get back to you uh, stay tuned for my next videos and uh, tra la la